ring final conductors, yep. Now, like we spoke before about continuative CPC, the reason why we're doing the testing, why we're we doing the continuative ring final, what we're trying to prove with this test, guys? It will prove polarity, yeah, with continuity. steps two and three. Continuity, yeah, but what's, what's particular ring about a ring difference. final that's not about other circuits we might have worked on? Because it's a ring, isn't it? It's, it's a ring, isn't it? Yeah. So, in very basic terms, So it's different than a radio circuit, isn't it? Because it starts off at our distribution board, it connects each socket together, and then the last leg goes back to the distribution board, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a ring final. Now, what size protector device would we normally have on this? 32. Yeah, a 30 or a 32. So we say IN is 32 amps, agree? Yeah. What size conductors are we going to install generally? 2.5. 2.5. So we'd say the current carrying capacity of that 2.5 cable is approximately how many amps? 25, 26. Probably 27, best case scenario. Yeah, and as we know, don't we, in basic circuit design, that doesn't add up, does it? No. You know, because that is going to fail long before that protector device operates. So this only stands, doesn't it, if it's a prominent circuit, open circuits. But also, what if I decide I need an extra socket? So. I decided I'm going to put an additional socket in, very small socket this one, and I think, yeah, happy with this, I know what to do. We wire it up, don't we? That's okay, isn't it? It's a spur, it's absolutely fine. But what happens if I get a little confused and I decide to do something like that? Is that acceptable? No, it's parallel. It's a ring within a ring, isn't it? Or a, a figure of eight we sometimes call it, or an interconnection. Because again, now, if we go back to that first scenario and we've got a broken conductor here, are we necessarily going to know about that? It, it could be hidden, couldn't it? Because your, your continuity tester will just measure through here. So again, we've, we've got an issue there, haven't we? So our ring final test, guys, does three things, really. It's going to make sure that all our set sockets are connected in a ring final. It will identify anything wide as a spur, any socket wide as a spur. And also, it will identify any of the hideous interconnections or figure of eights we might have. Okay? And also, as you said, steps two and three combined will also prove polarity. Yep, so that's why we're doing it different than we would do on any other circuit. I find his reference materials, yep, there's no harm in sitting down and just confirming what you think you know, rather than spending 20 minutes doing the same thing, getting the same result, getting nowhere. Okay? Right, moving on then. So there's three steps to continuity of ring final, isn't it, Ben? End to end. End to end, aren't we, yeah. Exactly what we just said, really. We're going to measure our loops of cable, so we're going to measure the brown loop, if you like, and record that as lowercase r1, or little r1, as I'll refer to it from now on. We'll do the same with the neutral loop, and we'll record this as lowercase rn, or r, little rn, and the same with the CPCs, yeah, little r2, okay? Just making sure we've got a closed loop of cable, because we haven't, then no way is this a ring final circuit, is it? No way. So, the continuity test has stayed still from the previous testing, guys, it's still zeroed, uh, I don't need to do anything to it, I'm happy enough with it. So let's measure the value of little r1 then. So it's coming in there at 0.45 of an ohm. Yep. So what I do now then is I record that on my schedule of test results. Yep, so we're in continuity, guys, we're on ring final, and I've just measured little r1 there, yeah, and it's coming at 0.45. So we write that in the column. Yep, and we'll do the same with the neutral loop. Now, in terms of resistance, what should this value be? Same. It should be the same, shouldn't it? It's the same cross-sectional area, the same number of connections, the same length, should be pretty much the same. And luckily for me, it's come on there at 0.55, which is exactly 0.45, which is exactly the same. Now, if we have any discrepancies between them two results, what would that indicate to us? Connections. Loose connections, isn't it? So, for example, if little Rn came in at you know 0.55, that would indicate possibly some poor connections on the neutrals, wouldn't it? We'd have to go back a stage and, and start checking all our connections. But that really verifies that, doesn't it? Yeah. So the last part of step one, then we do the same to the CPCs. Now you might have noticed that this is a reduced size cross-sectional area. 
So it's not going to be the same, is it? It's a 1.5 mil conductor, so it's going to have a higher resistance, isn't it, than 0.45. Yeah. So we can't compare it directly, can we, to the, to the two live conductors because it's not the same size. What you can do, though, as somebody mentioned there, if we think about it, the ratio between our 2.5 mil conductor and our 1.5 mil conductor, somebody said it, is effectively 1.67. Yep, 1.67 times the size of it. So what we can do, we can multiply those values we took during step one by 1.67, and that should tell us approximately what our R2 should indicate or should the value should be. Does that make sense? Yep. So if someone wants to about at this stage, is it? I think that's fair enough. Now, if that was wildly different, and it would be a case again, all our socket accessories off or our socket tops off, and we'd have to start checking our connections. But I'm going to accept that one as okay. So we'll record that down there. As 0.8. So that's step one in the bag, guys. Any questions? Right, moving on to step two then. So, what's step two? Can anyone tell me? L1, LN, no, R1, R. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty much there. So, we need to make a cross connection at the distribution board, don't we, from, from one leg of the ring to the other. Yeah, so effectively what we're doing is we're turning our cables into one big loop of cable, aren't we? We're effectively, we're going to do that with our neutral and we're going to connect it to our line. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Now, if we're working in a composite cable such as Twin and Earth or LSF or something like that, it's very easy to work out which leg is which, isn't it? But where we've got this, as you can see, it's wired in single core cables. There is no indication of which leg is which. So I don't really know which is L1 and which is L2. So all I can do is take best guess on that really and make a connection. Now when we come to measure at the sockets, if I've got that wrong, it'll become apparent very quickly that I've got that wrong, okay? So hopefully I'm going from L1, neutral two, and from L1, to neutral one, neutral, sorry, from L2 to neutral one. And just make sure that none of your clips are touching each other because otherwise that will influence your test results, okay? So I, I've done my best here because they're not identified. I might find that I've done that incorrectly, but we'll soon find out. So what we need to do now then is go around every socket on our ring, ring, ring circuit and we need to take the So before I do that though, what value am I expecting guys as I go around and measure each socket? What value is it? About 23. Just yeah, the so you work that on your head haven't you? Yeah, it works yeah. out there. So yeah. it's 45, 45 then divided yeah. by 4. Yeah, exactly. So we need, we need though a, a predicted or reference value before we start measuring the sockets because if we don't have that and we get 0.23 there, and we get 0.29 there, and 0.34 there, and 0.45 there. What's that telling me? Absolutely nothing. So you must have that reference or predicted value, whatever you want to call it, you must have that on the back of your sheet there. Now, I'm going to do it on the board so we can see it all. However, you can see on the back of my schedule of test results, it is ready for that, okay? It's already prepped, and you must do the same on, on the back of your schedule of test results, okay? I'm going to do it on the board so we can all see it. Is this on Thursday? You give us a sheet. You on your assessment, yeah, you will need to have it on there. Okay, because otherwise you can't really say that you've verified your results. So, you've already beaten me to it, however. So, this is a, the connection, or this is the, uh, the formula we need. It's very simple. So, we're going to take R1 plus Rn that we took in step one, add them together, and divide them by four. So, 0.45 added 0.45. And then divided, as you said, it's going to give us somewhere around 0.23 of an ohm. Okay, so that's what we're looking for now. That's my predicted or reference value. And you must have that before you start measuring at your sockets. Otherwise, you've no idea what's going on. Okay. Now, there are some variables in this, isn't there? One, I don't know whether I've got that connection right. And also, these are not new sockets. So what's, what's that going to cause us? Resistance. There's going to be a contact resistance in these sockets, isn't it? So you might not always get the exact reading you want. You've just got to really see through that and work out whether it's a fixed wiring or the socket itself. Okay, so 
We'll see what we're going to get, who knows. Okay, so that's lower than we expected, isn't it? What would that point to, do you think? Cross Could be the cross connection is wrong, isn't it? But what I'll do is I'll just take a few measurements at sockets just to see if we can get anywhere near that 0.23 we looked for. And again, that's gone up, hasn't it? So what do you think that's indicating? Is that an interlink? It's possibly, I don't think it's an interlink, but it might well be that we've got that connection the wrong way around.
three mark. Yeah, happy with that. So again, obviously I've got lucky there, or you could call it skill, whatever you want to say. I call it skill, you might call it luck. So we've got the highest one there for step three becomes what result, guys? Point zero. Pardon? Point eight zero. Yeah, it it's becomes good. what result though on R1 our sheet? R1 plus R2, 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 R2 doesn't it? Yes, it goes in the R1 plus R2 column. So 0.84. And because we've done steps two and three together now, that right. also proves polarity. So we can tick the polarity column. Yep. So that is continuity of ring final conductors done. Any questions? Got to make sure you get this right, guys. Yeah. And as I say, remember you've got on-site guide, guidance note free for reference if you lose your way at any stage. C, C, 